Hi, we're Paul and Marie. We're a UK reselling couple based in Southampton in Hampshire. And this is our niche experiment. <laughs> This week we're going to have a chat about whether it's worth niching down. Yes, something we've we've thought about quite a lot recently. Isn't yeah, it, it is. Yeah, yeah. I think it's where you see various people talking about it. I think it was the mail back from burnout tech and sports thing that really sort of made us think about it, and then Cookie and the Haydens, Carbu, Chris was talking about it, mm. and it made us sort of think. Um, just to give you a bit of a recap on um, our life, really, what we used to do is we um, used to have separate eBay accounts. Yeah. Paul used to just just deal with new toys, new toys, yeah. And I dealt with everything else, anything, and it was mainly second hand, wasn't it? Mm. And at the time, we both had the big shop. I don't know what that's the technical term for the it. The big shop. The, well, we, we've had yeah, obviously. The medium we've had is the, it? The what? Sorry. Medium size. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. The um, yeah. The medium. Uh, subscription, yeah. Shop so it's subs- costing us yeah. about eighty two fifty each a month. Yeah. And what was happening is Paul does all the photography for for mine and yours. Mm. And because you struggled, um, because you were doing all that and everything else, you struggled to list. So mm. I decided to help you by listing. Mm. So in the end, we thought, well, this is daft. We're paying for two eBay stores. That's it. Uh, and we're both helping each other. Let's just combine, combine it. Combine all together. So yeah. one Christmas, we spent a horrible five days doing a stock take mm-hmm. and we joined them all together. We did. We went through the process of joining all our listings, you know, and, and doing all that. A hell of a job. Yeah. And we thought we were set. But over time, um, we've started to realise if we've sort of nobbled ourselves because at one point we had about 1,900 listings. Yeah. And over time, we've been trying to get those listings down. And we've watched various people talk about um, traffic, how you get traffic from eBay. How you're, yeah, how and, it's all viewed and, 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 you know, if you sort of spread yourself over yeah, various yeah. different categories, you only get a set amount of traffic. So yes. that amount of traffic is being spread over all of those categories. And we sell everything, um, everything and anything yeah, we sell, we anything we think we can make money on. Mm. Um, so in our last video, you would have seen us dealing with plug sockets, we've got mm-hmm. posters, we've got magazines, all sorts, I mean, all comics, sorts. all yeah. sorts. Um, so recently, we've been having a think about it because, to be honest, it has, this year has been more difficult for us. Mm. Um, the sales have not been good, not as good, not as, as, good as previous been, no, years, and we are wondering if it is because we are we've got too much of a range, and our traffic is being spread over it, and that means that certain categories are just not not performing. Um, not performing. Mm. So, yeah. like anything, um, if you've watched any of our videos, we are always trying to be better at what we do. Yep. We are always trying to streamline and improve our situation. And how we do it, trying to make yeah. things quicker, more efficient. And because we had the two stores at one point, we we did close the other one, but we kept it, didn't we? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we we closed. We, we didn't physically close it. We we literally we stopped, no listings on it, and obviously it. stopped the shop subscription. So there was no costs involved in it. It was just there in the background, not doing hovering, anything. Yeah. Hovering in the background. That's so it. I mean, s- the, the the other shop, the the one we use, it's it's. You know, we, we've had for years the big shop. Yeah, we, we call years. it the big shop because it's got the most feedback on it. And, yeah, and the most listings. Um, you know, so um, and the other one um, was obviously a lot smaller. But yeah. again, we've had it for a while. Yes. Um, so we had, we'd so. already built up some feedback on there. Mm. Um, so what we thought we would do as a bit of an experiment. Now this is mainly because we'd started doing clothes for this Emily's twenty first birthday challenge. challenge. That's it. And what we thought was, well, why don't we? have a trial yeah. so what we've been doing is we've been cutting down our listings to under 500 on the bigger site so 1500, 1500. What, did i just say 500, 500. oh no <laughs> we wish so yeah, cutting five, them down to 1500 and the money that would have been spent on those listings is what we're now using to reactivate the store yes. on a small shop yes so this is the 30 pound a month subscription yeah, yeah that's the cost isn't it mm. um on the sort of strict proviso that this smaller store should be run on 250 listings or less. So we're not going to get into the situation we've had on this other one where we we go over. We don't want to pay anymore. We we should be able to run um, an eBay site for 250 listings and generate some income from it. Yeah. So 
we decided we would do this, we would set it up and it would only sell clothes and shoes and we would see really whether um, niching down works. Niching down mm. works. We didn't want to go um, whole hog, did we? No, no. <laughs> Niche down in clothes and shoes and then find out it's, it's terrible. Yeah. So we thought we would run this as a trial against our normal mm. shop. Yeah. So we've been doing this now for Hun. Because this is going to surprise you. 46 days we've been doing this. Have we really? I know. Our first sale was on the 24th of June. Now, just to give you an idea, we, we know how eBay works, we know the algorithm, and if you, it's consistency, isn't it? Well, you say know the, nobody knows the algorithm. Well, no, we, we don't know. <laughs> we're, not in the, we're not in the know. No, we're but, not. <laughs> but we know that you have to list consistently you every do, day. You do, that's it, yeah. And as much as we would love to be like Melf back from burnout and list 30, no matter how hard we try, because what we we've can't been doing... can't do it consistently, that's the No, problem. it's the consistency bit that, that is the important yeah. bit. And at the minute, what we've been trying to do is is to do five clothing listings on the small site and five normal listings on the big site. What we don't want is to, to ruin the big site because we're focusing on the small site. Yeah. So we're, we've been consistently doing that for 46 days. And what we try and do is build up a bank as well, don't we? That mm. is our long time aim to try and have a massive draft bank. Mm. Um, so, for example, when we went to Wales recently, we'd built up some clothing and yeah. some in the big store so we could do that and use it. So we have been completely consistent, five a day, and over the 46 days, we've now got 180 items listed. Mm. So we are getting dangerously close to our 250 listings, and that's, that's when it's going to be quite interesting, because we're going to have to juggle stuff about, put stuff on auction, we're going to have to do stuff to try and come, keep coming under that. That's it. So out of those 46 days, bearing in mind we only started um, on the first day with five items, mm. So we have been, been building it fairly slowly, yeah. but out of those 46 days, 22 days we've had no sales. Right. So that is, but it's because it's been it's building. It, yeah. And a lot exactly of those it. were towards the beginning. Yeah. So like one day we had about five days where we had no sales at all. Yeah. But now we're getting normally a couple of days where we get no sales and then, then we get a sale. So it's getting smaller and smaller, the, yes. the, the time that you're having no sales. But it, like you said, it is, um, it's building. Building and um, yeah. It's, some it's days we're getting two two sales. Some days we get three sales. Yeah. But then you might have two days with no <laughs> sales. So it is sort of building. Mm. Um, but we just thought we'd let you know this is what we're doing, so we can keep you updated over time. Because I'm sure some of you are also thinking, should should we be niching down? Mm. The thing with the clothing is when we started doing it, is we realised how quick it was to pack. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, it's fairly easy to it's... list it if you do it in batches. Yes. And that's what that's we're it. sort of linking onto now, huh, aren't we? Is we yeah. are going to show you exactly from start to finish how we deal with clothing mm. um, and how we do everything in batches because we find it to be the most streamlined way of doing it. Mm. So we're going to stop rabbiting now, huh? Well, I say we, oh, it's me, isn't it? Yeah. Me rabbiting on. And we're going to take you through um, some of the ways we deal with things. Mm. Right, so this is how we start with clothing and shoes. We've come back from the charity shop with a pile of things. These were shown in our last video, I think, hun. Lovely jumper. So the first thing we do is catalogue everything we've purchased. This is mainly for our, for accounting purposes, so um, we can sort all that out, ready to pay tax at the end of the year. So we'll show you how we do that. So basically, all we've done is we've created a document with the date on it, and we just list out each item and the price we paid for it, and if I scroll down slowly, at the end, at the bottom, it just says what the price is. And then this just gets printed off, and then this goes into our accounts. Now, this is the next point in the process where some of you are going to soon realise that I'm quite like Simon from Married to Reselling, and I do love a spreadsheet. This is one I've created, because at the, at the present time, we are running the Friday Challenge, where... We are doing the toys, 10 toys for our daughter, selling them and doing the clothing challenge. Into £2,000. Into £2,000. Yeah. So at any time, we have some items that are for the 10 toys challenge. We have some clothing items that are for the Miss A challenge. And we've also bought other clothing um, that we sell. So it's keeping a track of it all. It is quite um, difficult unless you make this sort of document. So if I just take you through it, you've got on the left hand column here, um, you've got each item's numbered so that each item is tracked once it comes into the building. We know where it is at all times. 
If it's red, it's sold. If it's white, it's been listed. And if it's yellow, it's to be worked on. So we have it. It's had a number allocated against it, but it's not been drafted yet. So the stuff on the floor is relating to these yellow items here for, for the 10 toys. And then two of them will be there for Miss A. Um, and then I've got some other bits and pieces here that are waiting to be all listed. But you can see this is what we do. We, are, we fill out this. It gives us also um, the amount we paid because, you know, if Paul gets an offer in three weeks time, it's important that we know how much we paid for the item so we can decide how much we want to sell it for. I also put the date so we can in the future look back to see whether we've had it for too long and we want to shave the price a bit. Um, it also has the price here. The listing price. The listing yeah. price, yeah. And then you'll see on here, um, it, it's the date we sold it, what we sold it for. So, for example, on this one here was twenty four ninety nine. We put it up for. It sold um, on the clothing challenge for 20 And this was the um, actual amount of profit that went back into the clothing challenge. So it's important when you're doing anything like this to keep records because you don't know when you're going to need to refer back to them. So that's our clothing spreadsheet hung. So now we're at the point where we need to get cracking with these clothing. So I've brought them into a different area and I'm showing you another spreadsheet. Look at me, I'm loving spreadsheets. Now I've devised this purely because I want to work as quickly as possible on the clothing. So what we'll do is I'll do one now with you so you can see how we work. So I've got this piece of clothing. It's come back from the charity shop. So the first thing, obviously, I want to take off the charity shop label. I'll stick that there for the minute because that's got the price on. So I'm going to put in here three pairs. Excuse my writing. And this is a Charles, or it's that one hun that I can never pronounce. Charles Thwit. Charles. Oh, I've chosen something that's really difficult to spell as well. Charles Thwit. Right, it is a men's. So it's a men's polo. It is XXL, XXL. Now the colour, I'm going to say burgundy. So I'm going to put burgundy, blue, grey, stripe. It's not new, so it, a cross goes in the used section. Now the length, let me just reach over and get my tape measure. So... Now what you'll notice here is the back is longer than the front. So what I'll do is I'll take it from the top of this shoulder there. So it's 77.5 and 80.5. So I'll put the top here 77.5 F and 80.5 R. So it's front and rear. Just to make that clear on the listing, the back is slightly longer than the front. Then I move it round. And measure the pit to pit, which is 62, 62 centimetres. So look at the neck. This is, I believe, what they call a crew neck. So I'm just going to write crew in my form here. Type of sleeve is short. And the closure, I'm going to put a B for button. It would, it would either be hook or zip, that sort of thing, or tie. And then this one. That is that bit of the form filled in. But now what I'll do is show you how I check it. We've now come into another part of the house. This is our conservatory, which I use to check the items, mainly because it's got so much natural light. So we'll make this quick because it's like an oven today. So basically I lay the item flat and I'm looking along to make sure there's no stains. So I look along the front panels. Then I check the sleeves. Make sure there's no holes, turn it over, check in the, all the bits and pieces to make sure everything's okay. Now, if it was dirty in any way, it gets chucked behind me and I've got a pile of things to, to clean. It will go in the washing machine. But as you can see, these other things on here, this is my ironing pile. So this isn't too bad. I always give it a bit of a sniff test as well, because normally... It, it smells quite strongly of um, detergent anyway, so where, where they've been washed. Most people do wash before they donate. Um, but yeah, this item, I'll probably run over it with the iron before it, um, it gets photographed. But yeah, that is good to go. Right, so now you've just seen me check the item. 
what I will do is process all of the clothes in that way and then I will be left with a form that looks a bit like this. So this is one of these filled in um, and what you'll see is that I've added, I go back to the computer and add the number and the price of everything so that when I'm then checking the items I can have a look at what I'm going to list it for. So for example this St Michael pair of men's shorts we paid £1.75 and when I did some research I decided that I would list them for £16.99 and what will happen is when I've created the document I will then go through it to show that it's done but before we get to that point let's show you how we do the photographing. So now we're coming to create the actual draft um, because then when we take the photos what we do is we add the photos um, on the eBay app so we have to have the draft first. So what I've been sort of doing is normally we would do sell similar but recently because we've had different types of category for example like the one we've just been dealing with the polo shirt rather than over typing say a lady's skirt and then putting in polo shirt I've come up with the the templates um, and created a few new ones so I'm just going to go to that now because I do find that because I've preset that up it is a little bit quicker so I'm going to go to listing templates and go to the one I've already created which is pre-owned short sleeve polo shirt. I'm going to click on that and start listing. So because I've already preset it it's all it's already coming up with men's clothing, casual shirts and tops so I don't have to add anything there. But what I tend to add first is the number. So this has been given the number E166. So E oh that's A <laughs> E <laughs> 166 um, so then I'm going to put in there now what I just normally do is just do it quickly oh she says I'm doing it at an angle that's yeah, why I'm Mar rubbish Maria is at a slight angle <laughs> so I can show the screen so I'm just going to put in polo um, and because I've only got one of them I'm just going to scroll down and that's all I'm doing for the minute and saving it so that I've got something to attach my photos to. And now we'll show you how we photograph. So now we're going to film our clothing, how we deal with it. Now just want to make, out, make it clear that what we normally do is it in batches of either five items or ten items, but um, it's the day when we film our video, so we're just going to show you one. Um, but obviously we would do the same thing and do it normally do about an hour. So I can do between about 12 and 16 items of just the photography bit in about an hour but we're just going to show you one um, now it's not set up great we're going to be honest about that because we haven't put any investment into this side of it because we're doing a trial but obviously if the clothing does do well then we will streamline it because it's not ideal so at the minute we are just using a mannequin and a ring light and we just use this area in between our fireplace and our television because it's the only really bit of wall that is okay to film against so like I say it's not perfect but for the experiment we're just trialing it so we set my ring light up oh and then we can just show you how we do it oh turn it on that light there get me app set up on my phone for eBay I'm already hot, hun. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me so hot doing the photography. Um, what am I doing? It's a bit of a hot day, though. Oh. Try bear, Marie's bear just, with. Yeah, I normally use Paul's phone, but Paul's filming me with his phone, so now I'm trying to um, figure out how to do it. <laughs> it looks, looks take, all take different. Take the phone out of your case. Take the phone out of my case, okay. Yeah, because um, you won't be able to do it otherwise. Okay, how do you do that then, my Just pull up. So we finally got the phone out of its case. Sorry about that everybody, I'm not very technical and Paul had to give me a hand with that. We're now setting up the eBay app, getting that opened. And going into drafts and going on to the Charles Thwitt polo that I've just created, so I've opened that. I'm now going to click on the cross. And then recent, I click on the photo picture. <laughs> and then look at me with all the technical knowledge hand and then I'm going to start taking the photo so take the photo of the front I'm going to turn 
get around and take a photo of the back. I'll do it in this sort of order so that I don't have to do too much editing. So take a photo of the back. Turn it and do the side. Then I turn and do the other side. This is why I get hot on. It's all this exercise there. Yeah. Then turn it back to the front and then I change the thing on here, hun. I'm never quite sure why, but it makes it better. The one dash dash one. <laughs> think that's so it's, it's changing it to square rather than... Um... And then I go up and do the, the front with the buttons and the collar. Let's just go up a bit. There's no, normally I would do a pocket, but there's no pocket. And um, they have got a bit more side there. So I would normally photograph any of these sort of accent bits. Oh, bit of bending. Just make sure there's no... I'll probably film that bit there because it is a detail. So now I've used up seven photos. <laughs> I might try and get a button just because there's writing on the button. Not very steady though, hun. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to put it up and show. I don't know if I'm going to get that because it's quite light. But I'm going to show you the brand. It's the label and the brand, that's it, yeah. And it's also got Whether the size we'll there. So people can see the size. I haven't made it up. And then I'm looking at the washing label. There it is. Other side. So I try and position it the right way up just to save on the editing. But sometimes if you can't, then it's not too long to change it. Try and get it in focus. Normally, Paul does all the photography for everything, but recently with the clothing, I've started, home, haven't I? You have. So we've had a lot of photos of my feet in, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's because you just haven't got time, have you? What with all no, the editing it, and things it's, like it's, that. You're getting on well with it. I'm, getting, I'm learning, hun. I'm learning. <laughs> so I've done 11 out of 12. I'm happy with that. Yeah. So I'll press done. It's uploading. Oh. Oh, well, I've done something. No, try. Now, just bear in mind, normally when we do this, we do batches of five or ten, but just for the filming here, we're just doing it with the one, just to show yeah. you the process, really. That's it. So, what we're going to do now is go and bag it. Okay. Right, so now we're back. The item is all photographed. I've got all the details that I need, so now it's a case of folding it. Just fold the bottom and try and have it looking sort of like that in the bag. I'm going to put it in a bag. Ooh. And I go and do the listing. And then I will come back when the listing's been done and put the bit of paper in with the number on. Right, so the photos have downloaded, so I'm now just going to back out of that. And then go back to the computer. Right, so we have our Charles Thwitt Polo E166. So I check it against my E166 and I'll put a little A there. That means it's for Miss A's challenge. So, let's sort it out. So, Charles Thwitt, it is an XXL, it is burgundy, burgundy, got a gap there, extra gap, look for luck. So it's burgundy, blue, grey stripe. Now I've got some play there, so it's a polo, so it's men's polo 
shirt, but I always try and use as many characters. So I would put in um, men's, so I'm going to say short sleeve polo shirt. And I can't really get anything else in there. So I double check it. Charles Thwitt, burgundy, blue, grey stripe. I've put the size in. It's a short sleeve polo shirt. So I've got my right number, E166. Double check that. The category is right. Now it is condition is used and we always put in this item is in a good condition as shown in the photos. So please oh so please see the photos. We want people to the photos form part of the thing, don't they, Hans? So we want people to look. Yeah, they form part of the description in effect. So now we double check the photos, make sure they're okay. Quite long that one, isn't it? Yep, they're all in the right order. Collar. Not too bad, come. Huh? Yeah. XXL, make sure the size is right. So it's 100% cotton, I'll try and remember that for in a minute. Right, so we're happy with the photos, don't need to do anything to those. So the brand was Charles men's um, fit now I never really know with this I'm going to put is it regular do you think because okay I'm going to put XXL because I don't know I don't want to put anything wrong so XXL it was burgundy burgundy blue and grey I'm going to put in stripes so that it's really clear it buttons up it's a short sleeve um, it's cotton, um, pattern, I'm going to put striped, um, closure is a button, so try and fill in as many of these as possible, neckline, collared, features, so size type regular, I don't know if that is regular or not, okay, it's not going to be big and tall though, no, I think, it, is it? It does look regular. regular. Normally it says, you know, slim fit or tailored mm. fit. So I'm going to copy this and go down and add it there. So I don't have to type it again. I'm going to change new with tags to pre-owned because it's not new. Um, shirt details and measurements. So brand. We always try and put as much detail as possible, don't we, Han? Just so we don't get inundated with questions. Um, size is XXL. Colour. Um, I could always... Oh, burgundy can't spell. Burgundy, blue and grey. Um, closure is button. Now length. This is an important bit. So length, 77.5. And I'll put in brackets front. And just add centimeters in there, and then the rear measurement was so 80.5. Can't see 80.5 centimeters rear, just so they know there's two different sizes. The pit to pit, which is also important, is 62 centimeters. Um, now I've got sleeve length, so that's short. And it says on here, please see the photos, see what this item is made of, and the washing instructions. I always mention that it's pet free, smoke free, because that you know, a lot of people have allergies and things like that. And then we're going to look at the price. I've already looked this up, and we are looking at getting or putting it up for $19.99. Um, our postage is already preset. So we are sort of done. We we'll just do a quick double check, hun, don't we? We do. To make sure we've got the right size, we've got the right colour, it's used. So just going through to double check it all. Yeah. Everything's looking all right. And then we would just list it. And then what we would do. Oh, I've got a pen hand, but what I'd normally do is just cross through as I've left the pen in the other room. Um, cross through this 
So let's do that now, hun. So now we're back in here with the item. We've just listed this so it gets crossed through. It's done. Then I write the number E166. I then cross through here and put the number in. And that one is listed. And now we're back to the computer and now the E166 that we've just worked on, I click on it. I change it from yellow to white because it's now listed. Now let's show you where we put everything. Okay, so this is how we deal with the clothes once we've photographed them and once we've listed them, drafted, listed them and actually got them on eBay. So don't forget, we do everything in batches, so it's either five or ten at a time that we photograph and then we would come in here with, with five or ten and we would put them in these drawers. So if I show you how we restore them, they're just numbered, they um, go upwards so that whenever they sell, Paul can just grab one, find the number easily. Um, it's all about streamlining it and trying to do the operation as quickly as possible. Um, so that's sort of where they sit until they sell. And that's really how we sort of do everything, hun, isn't it? We um, it try is, and find yeah. the best way of doing it. We try and speed up the process. It, we, well, it, it, we start, don't we? And then, um, we, 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 like you said, we do try, try and, and find the, the quickest way of doing things. So... Um, so yeah, um, and I'm sure there'll be another element that we can change again to make it even quicker. But, yes, I mean, um, we would, in, if we were going forward with it, we would like to improve the photograph side of it. Yes, definitely. Um, but with regard to the forms, I'm, I'm sure some of you don't use forms at all, but one of the things I like about the, the spreadsheet side of it is the one with the measurements, is that I can fill it out and then I can sit in front of the TV and do it at night. And, you know, you're always going to have items of clothing that are dirty, so... You know that can stay on the sheet for a, a good few days because it's had to go in the washing machine then it's got to get ironed so you know you're never going to get everything on the sheet done straight away so the whole point of having everything tracked is because you've got different processes so some things like that that one we've just done is really quick other items that are dirty um, can take three or four days longer so you know you can have seven or eight sheets on the go at any one time so yeah. it is important to have everything itemized so yeah. that you know how how and where it is and what process is at. That's yeah. how we find the best way to do it. That's and it. it's fitting in with our life as well. Sometimes I've only got an hour, so I can just do a bit of ironing, and then at night I can sit and put the TV on, and the, the spreadsheet is there with all the measurements, and I can just create all the drafts ready for the next day for photographing. Yeah. We do like That's to it. get things ready to do the five a day. Sometimes we get the stuff ready the night before so that it can then go on. Um, the following morning, it's all ready to go. So mm, that's it. So that's how we do it. That's it. Yes, definitely. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. And if you liked our content, please like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to receive notification for future videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.